Archaeological finds broadly fit into one of two categories. They either confirm what we think we already know about history, or they challenge our understanding of history. Finds of the first kind are useful, but finds of the second kind are far more exciting. Allow us to prove it to you by checking some out in this video. Let's start with a big, broad question. How old is the human species? To answer that, perhaps we should look at a discovery that took place in Macoppin County, Illinois, USA in December 1862. According to records from the time, the bones of an adult human were found on a coal bed under two feet of slate rock, 90 feet below ground level. The bones were covered with a thick black crust. In theory, the coal in which the bones were found ought to be more than 286 million years old. That means the bones must be the same age, and that would throw everything we think we know about the history of the human race out the window. How much credence should we give to a discovery from 1862, though? The scientists and historians of the time didn't have access to the technology we enjoy today, and records of the skeleton's discovery are sketchy. Also, the bones have since been lost, so it's impossible to reassess them with modern technology and solve the mystery. Anomalous human bones have been found before, though. A human jaw was found in Foxhall, England in 1855, 16 feet deep in a quarry, in a layer of rock that's at least two and a half million years old. There are quite a few objects and artifacts that are claimed by their proponents to feature the oldest known writing on Earth. But the Dispilio tablet might be the definitive article. This object disproves the idea that the ancient Sumerians came up with the concept of writing 6,000 years ago, but not all archaeologists are comfortable with the idea of shaking up the timeline of writing with such a bold statement. That's why the tablet's been attracting controversy ever since it was discovered in a lake close to Castoria in northern Greece in 1993. As it's made of wood, the tablet can be dated, and it's been shown to be over 7,250 years old. Unfortunately, as we have nothing to compare it to, translating the text has not been possible. It might contain a deep philosophical statement about the nature of life, or it could be someone's shopping list. Unless we're able to recover more examples of the same writing, we may never know for sure. That means that we'll never know who created it either. We might be able to take credit for the invention of writing away from the Sumerians, but we don't know who to award it to instead. Archaeologists in North Yorkshire, England, have identified an ancient salt production facility, and they think it could be 6,000 years old. That would make it even older than Stonehenge. The salt production site is in the middle of a site called Street House Farm, which was already known to archaeologists prior to this latest find. Evidence of salt processing identified at the site includes broken Neolithic era pottery, ditches full of salt deposits, a storage pit, and three hearths. This is comfortably the oldest facility of its kind ever found on the British Isles, and testing could yet reveal it to be the oldest in Europe. In addition to that, the suggestion that salt was being produced here deliberately 6,000 years ago flies in the face of the idea that the ancient Britons didn't transition away from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle until about 4,000 years ago. The next oldest salt-making production facility ever found in the UK is a mere 3,600 years old. So the next question for scientists is why there's such a big gap and why this facility appears to have existed in isolation. Speaking of England, here's a discovery that was made in the country in January 2023, which may rewrite the history of the English Civil War. It's a medieval gatehouse, and it's been found in Coleshill, Warwickshire. And according to the archaeologists who found it, it's a discovery more precious than gold. They were only asked to survey the area because it's in the way of a new HS2 high-speed railway network in the UK. If it weren't for that, this gatehouse and its two monumental towers might have remained undetected forever. The surviving sandstone walls of the towers are covered by marks made by pistol fire and musket balls. Historians have taken that as evidence that the gate came under fire by parliamentarian troops as they headed to the Battle of Curdsworth Bridge in August 1642. If they're right about that, 
then whatever happened here would become the very first battle of the war, thus redefining its parameters. Along with the gatehouse, the team found the remains of a large Tudor-era manor house complete with ornamental gardens larger than those of Hampton Court. Taken together, these discoveries are nationally significant in the UK. In 2016, archaeologists in London, England started digging into an ancient Roman cemetery in the Southwark district of London. What they found there shocked them to their cores. Scientific analysis of two of the skeletons in the graveyard revealed that they were Chinese in origin. One of the Chinese individuals was buried in Southwark during the 2nd century, and the other in the 4th. This came as a revelation to historians. Although we've known for a long time that the Romans traded with the Chinese via the Silk Road, it's always been thought that the two great civilizations were wary of each other. Prior to this, the only person of Asian ancestry ever found in a Roman Empire burial site was discovered in Vagnari, Italy. The Italian discovery, which happened decades ago, was thought of as an anomaly. With the addition of these two burials in England, we now have to consider the possibility that Chinese people may have moved through and lived in Roman communities and territories. If that's true, then the reverse may also have been true. Archaeologists and historians are sometimes prone to hyperbole about the things they find, but we don't think it's an exaggeration to call the Gwenol Lioness one of the ancient world's greatest works of art. It's also one of the oldest sculptures ever discovered in ancient Mesopotamia. Experts believe that it was carved around 5,000 years ago by an elite-level Elamite artisan. Sadly, we'll never know the name of the artist who created this unique blend of human and animal features, but we do know that the style is consistent with the advanced levels of engineering and knowledge possessed by the people of Mesopotamia at the time. They'd already developed a written language, invented the wheel, and started building the world's first large-scale cities. It's thought that the lioness statue represents a cultural belief of the Elamite people, a belief that power over the physical realm could be attained by combining the attributes of humans and animals together. Such is its beauty and rarity that despite being made from limestone, a relatively worthless material, and standing just three inches tall, it was sold to a private collector for $57 million in 2007. Back to England again now, where a diary written by a Yorkshire farmer more than 200 years ago caused a stir when it was studied for the first time in decades at Oxford University in 2020. The diary, written by Matthew Tomlinson in 1810, contains views about same-sex attraction that are commonplace now but would have been considered scandalous at the time Tomlinson was alive. The penalty for homosexuality during Tomlinson's lifetime in England was death. But in the pages of the diary, Tomlinson argues that it's a natural human tendency which shouldn't be punished at all, let alone by death. The diaries have been studied by historians before, but were previously only considered important because of Tomlinson's detailed accounts of Luddites destroying machinery and eyewitness testimony of corruption in local elections. Somehow his liberal attitude to homosexuality had been overlooked. Tomlinson himself wasn't gay, but was prompted to write about the matter after a locally respected naval surgeon was arrested for engaging in homosexual acts. In his eyes, being gay wasn't a choice, and so punishing people for it was akin to saying that God had made a mistake. These days, people would call that woke. We're still in England for this next discovery. In early 2017, construction workers in the country were busy expanding the A1, which was already the longest road in Britain. In doing so, they accidentally came across a large Roman settlement in Scotch Corner, North Yorkshire. The settlement is full of high-value, high-status artifacts, so much so that historians have had to think anew about when and how the Romans conquered northern England. It now seems that wealthy Romano-Britons were living in the north far earlier than was previously imagined. There are 40 Roman buildings at the site, all of which were built halfway through the first century. That means that Roman road that runs alongside them was either built at the same time or even earlier. 
It was previously thought that the road didn't exist until the back end of the century. Artifacts recovered from the site include finely carved amber figurines, copper mirrors, glazed tableware, and artisan drinking vessels. These Romans must have felt safe and comfortable living here, so safe passage from the Roman-occupied south of the country to the north must have already been established. As we saw from the Dispilio tablet, the full history of the written word is unknown. Perhaps it always will be. We know that Chinese characters have been around for a very long time, though. In fact, they might have been around for longer than most people realize. In China's Ningxi Hui Autonomous Region is a site called Damadi, close to Bishan Mountain. There are more than 10,000 prehistoric rock carvings in Damadi. According to the Chinese archaeologists who studied the carvings in 2007, more than 2,000 of these pictographs can reliably be said to be between 7 and 8,000 years old. That's significant because they contain recognizable Chinese characters. It's possible that the modern Chinese characters that are used today might have originated here. It's a bold claim because the official historical narrative says that there were no Chinese characters until around 3,000 years ago, which is when they began to appear on bones and tortoise shells in the historical record. The oracle bones are generally held up to be the oldest examples of Chinese characters but the carvings at Damadi blow these bones out of the water. These findings still haven't been accepted in China, but the pictures speak for themselves. The history of humankind in the Americas is poorly understood. Every time we think we're getting close to the start of the tale, something is found that pushes the date of human arrival back further. Here's a discovery that does exactly that. It's a set of footprints that were found in White Sands National Park, New Mexico in September 2021, and the footprints are about 23,000 years old. This proves beyond all doubt that there were already humans in the Americas at the time of the last glacial maximum. Most of the prints appear to belong to teenagers and young children with only a few adults present. Prior to this discovery, most archaeologists believe that the earliest date that could be given for humans arriving in this part of the world was 16,000 years ago. This blows that idea out of the water. Knowing that these people were here gives us a new problem, though. Now we have to work out who they were and where they came from. People didn't suddenly spawn right in the middle of North America, so they must have got here from somewhere else. History is a story that we've written based on the things we think we know. And when one of those things changes, history can change with it. The discovery of a coin on the English Company Islands of Australia's Northern Territory, for example, might change what we thought we knew about the history of European settlement in Australia. The coin is heavily eroded, but it appears to come from Kilwa, close to the part of Africa we now know as Tanzania, and it was minted before the 15th century. The only other places in the world where Kilwa coins have been found are Kilwa itself, the Wessel Islands, and the Arabian Peninsula. The current prevailing theory about the coins is that they were taken by the Portuguese during the looting of Kilwa in 1505 and then brought to Australia. The Portuguese are known to have been in nearby Timor in 1514, so it isn't much of a stretch to imagine that they may have traveled a little further. If they did, that means they were here 300 years before the Dutch, who were previously thought to be the first Europeans to arrive in this remote part of the world. Mount Vesuvius erupted in the year 79 and destroyed the cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum in Italy. That's an established historical fact and isn't up for debate. The month in which it happened, however, is very much up for debate. In late 2018, scrawled graffiti was found on a wall in Pompeii written in charcoal. The content of the inscription suggests that the catastrophe happened in October 79. That's two months later than previously thought. The controversial inscription is on the wall of an interior room in the Regio 5 district of Pompeii within a house that was in the middle of refurbishment when the volcano struck. It contains a date, the 16th day prior to the calends of November. That would be October 17th. Traditionally, the date of the eruption has always been given as August 24th. 
The inscription certainly wasn't added after the eruption, so we must have Volcano Day wrong in our diaries. Archaeologists have also found autumnal fruit and harvest food in other parts of the city, so the evidence that the eruption happened in late October is now mounting. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching.